Oh, look at this engine bay. It's beautiful. I like it. It's getting better and better. This is about to improve as well. Time for you to go today. Look at this. I busted it open. You probably saw like a week after I got it. Got these on. Darn it. And then here's the new pair. Looking shiny, beautiful. So those are about to go on. And then a fresh new oil with a good filter. Beautiful day out today. Uh, so I decided to do some maintenance on my car and then uh, fix the wing list that I told you guys. Remember when I busted it off <laughs> like two weeks after I installed it. So it's been a while. I ordered the new ones and it's been months already sitting here. So I painted them, put some clear coat on it, let it dry, send it, wet sanded it down and then put another clear coat with spray can so it looks nicer. It looks a little more professional than just like, you know, a spray can job. So uh, today I'm gonna change my oil, it's already due. And then uh, while I'm at it, I'm just gonna swap the winglets. And then uh, also, uh, after my brother gets here, he gets off work when he brings the S60R. Uh, we came up on some issues and also we bought another mod for the S60R as well. So we'll include that in the video too. So yeah, stay tuned. All right, so we got the old one off. Look how busted up it is, fiberglass. Wow. Anyways, we got it off. There's the double-sided tape that holds it on top. On the bottom, there's bolts. So we got it cleaned up. So now I'm gonna grab some rubbing alcohol. Gonna wipe it down nicely so there's no oily substance. So the double-sided tape sticks nicely onto that. And then uh, we're gonna install it. I'm gonna change probably that one too. Um, even though it doesn't have as much damage as this one, it just has some curb marks or whatever. But yeah, we'll see. I'll probably just change it so they match. So yeah. Well, this is the things that we have to do <laughs> when you have a car lowered, when you don't feel like destroying the winglets again. Because they was really, really close when I was pulling up, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. So I added the two boards on, on, the, on the end there, so it just comes off safely. Look how beautiful that car looks now. Wow. Now I can take photos again because I was avoiding the driver's side. If you pay attention to my Instagram post, you, uh, you could probably see that I was avoiding this side just because of that. It always ruined the look. It's kind of embarrassing. So now any angle is good. <laughs> this thing is awesome. The engine bay keeps surprising me. The intake manifold will be here in two days or three days, I think, on Tuesday. Um, I'm hella excited for that. And then also the brake kit is always also going to be here. I think they said Wednesday, so there's gonna be some awesome content soon. I'm gonna be doing some dyno testing with the intake manifold before and after the install, and there's gonna be some awesome, awesome content on this car. So this is probably gonna be it for today's video for this car. Um, the next few seconds, in a few seconds, you guys are probably gonna see, and it's gonna be the S60R. Let me do an update on that. We have a check engine lamp and let you guys know what it's for, and then what we did um, upgrades wise. Uh, on that already and then what we're planning to do so yeah stay tuned it's the next morning the next day um my brother didn't make it yesterday so he brought the car in today so today uh we have the check engine light, like i told you guys i'm gonna scan i'm gonna show you guys what the code is and i'm gonna show you what parts we ordered to replace to fish to, you know fix that and then also for the upgrade um so that's powering on right now so we got the sweet source filter um we did some research uh, because you know how people say you know the K&N the oily destroys the turbos all that blah 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 stuff so this is a dry uh, high flow air filter uh we read some good things about it we actually received it like a few days before um, shifting lanes posted their video about this guy here uh, I also did a drive before and after I'm gonna tell you guys I'm gonna be honest the the noise itself obviously improved but I don't know, yeah, I think in second and third gear, high RPMs, man, this thing, you know, changed the, how, how good it pulls. Like the power, it was pretty noticeable how it increased, the car was breathing better. I don't know if that's because our old one was original and it was already dirty and it wasn't letting the car breathe and then we put this one in or it's just that much better as a filter. So either way, we're happy about this one. So yeah now we're gonna hook this up to the car and i'm gonna show you guys what the code is okay so i entered the vehicle in um now we're in the engine menu 
Uh, we're gonna go to codes. What? Okay, this doesn't make any sense. Mm, let's go to code scan. See what it, what it shows us. There it is, engine. Why did it not show? Anyways, it says leak diagnostic unit pump signal too high. So this is for the emissions evap pump. That when you start the car up cold, it pressurizes your system, your fuel system, to check if there's any leaks in it. That pump itself uh, started going out. So we ordered it from FCP Euro. It was about 70 bucks. Um, I'll show you guys in a second. Uh, FCP Euro, we ordered that pump, so it's gonna be here. It's about 70 bucks uh, or something like that. So it's not too expensive a unit, but you can know we have we had to replace it. And, and we did some research, and it's pretty common issue with these X60Rs. Um, these pumps going out um, it just over times so, i mean any electrical component usually it wears out so and this especially every time you start the car cold it, it worked so it's like yeah so it's pretty common so anyways we we got that pump ordered on order so we're gonna replace it i'm gonna show you guys how we replace it and then yeah hopefully and most likely will this code will go away and then we check the code with the wires to it everything was good so uh it's just the pump itself that's shorting out inside okay so now i'm just gonna go back i'm gonna clear all the codes uh the headlight we already replaced i'm gonna show you guys that as well uh, we replaced the headlight already uh so now I'm, there was a code for the headlight because we obviously we changed it already we didn't do any clear codes after that so we're gonna clear the codes the engine light that most likely will come back before we even receive the pump but okay all good so now we're good. So now we're just gonna buy the pump, replace it, and then, you know, if the code comes back, we'll just clear it after we replace it, and then all good, should be all good. So as you guys probably noticed, and I'll show you in the filter, that we got the headlight already. We got the headlights, we got a pair. It, I don't remember how much we got it for, around three, $400. Uh, the guy sent us the pair, and then, um, this the headlights had some broken tabs and stuff he didn't specify that so he anyways he refunded us like a hundred dollars so anyways they cost us about 300 bucks for the pair they have some broken tabs on them and stuff but they seem like they're functional i mean they have like some chips on them but we didn't care we just wanted a functional light that had a glass on it and that was functioning so we didn't really care but yeah um we installed it so everything seems pretty good now um the lights work now we're just gonna be getting the bumper we found one found a website that um uh ship out bumpers refurbished so pretty much renewed bumper and they can paint it for you for about 600 bucks shipped to your house uh painted so yeah we're probably gonna do that just gonna get one pre-order with the paint code sent them the paint code and then uh, yeah it's not cheap i was hoping really would get a cheaper one but since it's an old car but i guess not <laughs> it's a volvo still so yeah anyways we're gonna fix it we're gonna fix the bumper and then we're gonna dive straight into the exhaust and tuning after that so we already got the intercooler the intake um the you know, i mean filter so i mean that's perfect i mean in these cars you, it has enough flow and cold air the system the intake system it's a lot better than these cars in these ones so all we needed is just this guy here so and then after that we're gonna get exhaust and then the tuning so yeah we're gonna have some fun with this one so in today's video, I'm going to show you guys um, some 0 to 60 and then the acceleration. I'm going to go find an off-road course just after, you know, just out of the city or here a little bit. So gonna, I'm, I'm not too far. I'm on the side of the city. I'm not in the center anyways. So we're going to drive out and then find the road uh, and then we're going to do some, you know, from 0 to 60. I'm not going to abuse the car. I'm not going to really launch out or anything like that, but I'm just going to do some acceleration videos and I'm going to have my brother here uh, on the side uh, film the speedometer just to show you guys some you know some nice clips of how this car accelerates now it's actually pretty pretty good uh, we did some uh, pulls with the Audi a7 and uh, most of the time we pulled ahead uh, some of the videos if we screwed up a little bit and shift properly we were about the same but most of the time this car pulls ahead so we're really impressed with the power so yeah so we're gonna do some uh, some pull videos and show you guys the speedometer or you know how the car drives
So as you guys saw, I mean, it pulls pretty good. Um, the only thing I noticed in these cars is like, it's almost impossible to, what do you call it, power shift or shift fast enough without letting the gas go from second, from first to second. It kind of revs like you need to do really lightning fast or I don't know, I wasn't able to get it. And I didn't want to ram it too fast because it feels like there's some tension in the shifter from first to second. So when you try to shift it, it has some sort of resistance. So I didn't want to force it. So it jumps a little bit the RPM from first to second gear, but all the rest of the gears were pretty good. I was able to shift it fast enough where it kind of, you know, rev matched and cut it in time. So it, this car is pretty impressive, to be honest. I mean, I can only imagine how fast it's going to get with the exhaust and then uh, the tune. Because right now, I mean, even when I was driving the car, I told my brother, I was like, you can't even smell this car is running rich. Like, you can't smell that it's not burning all the fuel inside the car. So this car definitely needs a tune already, but we're willing to wait for the exhaust uh, which is going to be probably in the next week or two or whatever when when the IPD gets in stock uh, we're going to get the full down cad pretty much the turbo back the down pipe and cad back uh, exhaust from them so once we install that and we're just going to get a stage two or stage two plus tune uh, onto this car and then uh, yeah we're going to be pushing some good power and going to have some fun times with this car once the drag ship opens, we'll take this car and then the new car to the drag ship and we'll have some fun. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but you can probably see this side is already kind of saggy. Um, the shocks, the front shocks are pretty much toast, so we need those. When you put it in comfort mode, man, it gets noisy, rattly, man, it's ridiculous. In sport mode, it's okay, still to tolerable, you know, it's kind of, you know, it's reasonable still. But yeah, in comfort mode, it's already all over the place. It's, it's ridiculous. So we need the shocks as well on this car. So we're going to get the bumper shocks, you know, exhaust. Hey, anyway, so I'm going to document everything on the channel. So hope you guys enjoy. We're going to have some fun with this car, with that car. Like I said, we have a bunch of parts coming for that, the red car already next week. I'm gonna get everything in stock, so I'm just gonna be installing it, you know, one by one, the brakes, the intake manifold for red car here, and then, um, yeah, for this car as well, uh, we're gonna be ordering stuff. So yeah, hope you guys enjoy. And um, an idea for next video, well, I may be doing upgrades, like the brakes for this car, the intake manifold that when it comes, and then doing a dyno videos, because I did it before. Uh, dyno without intake manifold, now I'm gonna do it with. So I may be doing those first, but this car, somebody gave me an idea and i already tried it out shifting the car when you race or when you just kind of want to do a pull or zero to 60 you have to try to shift the car at about four and a half five thousand rpm you just use the paddle shifters if you let the car go you know all the way to like the red line the six thousand rpm it slows the car down and i already verified that i didn't know that but uh somebody mentioned in my instagram video as i tried to shift it and i tried man oh man did it make a difference the car oh man i don't know how i couldn't figure it out i mean i should have looked at my uh, dynograph and just looked at the peak power where it is and just shifted it at that rpm but i didn't think about it i just kind of you know put it in sport mode and just floored it and let the car go all the way and sometimes in first to second gear as you guys probably saw some of my videos on instagram maybe on this one too that the car doesn't switch fast enough from first to second gear so much torque they accelerate so quickly that it, the first to second gear switching is really slow and you i lose a lot of time between the first and second gear but when i shift it this thing doesn't doesn't lose any power just like, and just like man it's impressive so i'm gonna do a video on that too i'm gonna try it out shifting you know four thousand rpm five six and i'm just gonna make a video specifically on that I think it will make a great video for you guys to see the difference between, you know, just putting in sport mode and shifting at different RPMs. And then I'm going to get probably a Draghi app. It's a GPS and um, uh, Bluetooth uh, app, uh, the thing that it measures your zero to 60 times, quarter mile, one eighth of a mile, everything. And it's really actual. I've seen a lot of people compare it to the drag strip and it was identical. So I'm going to get that and I'm just going to try it out and I'm going to record everything and just tell you guys what, what I saw, what the difference was. So uh, you should guys expect that video soon too. Uh, probably after I do all the upgrades. So the upgrades video will be probably first. So that'll be it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about it that like modifying cars or that like Volvos in general. We're gonna have a lot of content on this car and then also on that S60R there. So for you guys' entertainment, uh, we spend a lot of time uh, on these cars. Um, I don't get any sponsors right now, so not anybody paid me for videos or anything I make. 
So I just spend my personal time just so you guys can enjoy it, so you guys can have some you know Volvo content. So it'd be really cool if you guys can hit the subscribe button, you know, hit the like button. Um, it helps me out. Uh, so yeah, thank you guys again, and uh, as usual, see you next time.